bunch of different sources, largely engineered wood, so particle board, plywood, luon, uh, hardboard. Basically, manufactured homes in general have three to four times the ambient formaldehyde level of uh, conventional homes, and even conventional homes, new conventional homes often, sorry, I've done this so many times, I'm just like running. It's a binding glue. agent. Okay. Yeah, and so like your carpets are being held to their backing by it. A lot of the cosmetics are, are uh, use it for maintain form. Or is um, it preservative? It's a it, it, yeah. it's it's a binding agent that also helps kill funguses and things like that. Yeah. So it has a couple different uh, uses in in, um, in your home. But basically, it's coming from airport. So it's the structure. It is it is your home. It is the walls. Like, uh, it's not leaking in from a factory. It's not coming in through the pipes. It is the structure of your shelter that is your exposure. And so that's a pretty profound paradox. Um, and so we were, we started talking about ways that we could move forward on um, remediating it. And there's a, a not too far from where Dan lives was NASA was trying to figure out how they could stop poisoning their uh, astronauts because if, if mobile homes are more synthetic and less ventilated than the conventional home, what could be worse than the space station? Right. Um, so they, in this uh, trailer basically in Picayune, Mississippi, uh, in the 90s, Dr. Bill Wolverton was experimenting with low light common house plants uh, to remediate uh, indoor atmospheres. And so they locked a, a, um, a graduate student in there you know, for a summer, which um, with a bunch of houseplants. And it's interesting, the scientists thought that the most, if the, the best register for its safety was that the person was healthy. So they did, they did run mass spec uh, and found that there was um, uh, low levels of a, of a broad range uh, of toxicants, but most importantly, that person was healthy, whereas when they were building it, scientists would walk in and get irritation with their eyes and um, respiratory tracts within minutes. Um, so this was also during sort of the biodome era. Uh, so there's like a sort of yeah. utopic. Sure? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I need to get some like, need to get some good poly short gifts. In my <laughs> um, and so there's like sort of a utopic moment um, where people were thinking that they could become natural in a different sort of way to solve their problems. But it sort of turned out that the amount of houseplants you would need in order to remediate your home is something in the order of like 360 plants wow. for mm -hmm. the average um, for the average like 1,200 square foot American home. Um, so that's invasive. It's probably going to increase the humidity level, so you're going to have mold. Um, it's a lot of work. It's really expensive. Um, what, what do the plants actually clean exactly? Okay, so that's that's great. So let's get into that part now. Uh, the plants themselves are, are, are taking a small amount of the ambient chem chemical load through their stomata um, and then sort of incorporating benign formaldehyde or other toxic metabolites into their like everyday cellular function. But what's really doing yeah, a lot the of the stomata are the little holes in the leaves. Right? Yeah, so they're pores. <laughs> like they got all the pores. pores. So they have it's going in through their, their pores. Um, and but what's interesting is that the scientists didn't learn for another couple of years after that that it was really the bacteria amongst the rhizosphere that was really doing a lot of it was like pulling a lot of the weight. The um, roots then. Yeah. The rhizosphere and the roots. Sorry. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> so the roots sort of cultivate a whole little uh, ecology around them. So they're like exuding things. Um, that are really yummy to some bacteria and really repulsive to others. Um, so what they thought was a species difference between plants that was the plants were actually doing different work and remediating different chemicals. It was really the plants cultivate different bacterial colonies on their roots and those different bacteria eat up different chemicals. Um, so we did a field test. Dan and I did a field test of a of we were trying to overcome the diffusion limitation, right? So in, you, you had to get 360 plants in one home in order to get enough air in the roots to remediate your air, or you can plug a little aquarium pump into the root structure. Um, so that the that's the hope is that it would increase the diffusion by 200 times, and also uh, the bacteria are not uh, metabolically limited. They actually like, sort of acquire a taste for these chemicals as they're exposed to, to more, and probably also select for them. Yeah. yeah. So ideally, there's a plant on the top of this. 
What? So there's a, this is under the plan, then there is the plan. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, get to, we'll get to that in just a second. So, um, so Dan and I did a preliminary field deployment of a simple planter I found at a thrift store for a dollar. I drilled a hole in it, put a gasket on it, and put an aquarium tube, reversed the, reversed the, um, the, the diaphragm, which is a simple movement of uh, making the pump into a vacuum, so pulling air instead of pushing it. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a hack that's really easy to do. So this woman who's not technical at all just did it in Georgia um, that's been connected with us because she's facing formaldehyde exposure issues. Um, and with that deployment that Dan and I did, uh, we found a 40%. There's a lot of variables. So I mean, it's one, it's one small indication of its efficacy, but we found a 40% reduction uh, in formaldehyde in that home, um, which was sort of equivalent to the, I've been monitoring that home for years. And it, that 40% reduction in a month was equivalent to the reduction in formaldehyde over four years. Oh, um, so I saw a 40% reduction since 2011-2005, and we saw a 40% reduction from the, the one month. That's, that's a pretty impressive Yeah. So I mean, it was super consistent over, over time, um, despite all the variables. Um, so that's a really exciting thing, um, but we're also wondering if maybe we don't need the plant if we're, if we're interested in the, in the bacteria. So we know there's been a, a study, there was a study in uh, Iran that uh, they went to the formaldehyde plant and found a bacteria that was thriving uh, in the, like the outs, the- In the, the waste. Out, yeah. Outflow. Yeah. 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 In the outflow. Waste outflow. And so those are some of the ones that eat it up the best. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Flowers in the dust. Yeah. And uh, so some of the idea here is, could we um, create sort of like a sourdough starter type exchange of bacteria that could help people clean their air, that could remediate it in a way that um, was not obtrusive uh, and financially wasn't gonna change their atmosphere humidity level um, and was very inexpensive. Um, and so Gretchen has an extensive history with remediation. Um, so she's, I'm like, I don't know what I, what my role is, but Gretchen's like, you know, <laughs> do it, like under, understands the, the science in a way that I don't only dream of. But that's the perfect explanation. That was uh, exactly what the purpose of this is. So we just went, and, um, one of the best places to collect bacteria is uh, at a wastewater treatment plant because um, a lot of wastewater, well, all wastewater treatment plants use biodegradation to deal with um, a lot of the waste. And so this um, this is from the mixed liquor, which is uh, basically like just a bunch of bacteria that they will then um, aerate some more um, to, to really get these like really good aerating bacteria all happy um, and then put that basically into the sludge and, and decompose it. Um, but this is before the aeration step because the wastewater treatment plant was kind of flooded. Um, but anyway, so there is just like a whole host of bacteria and we're gonna see if this kind of mixed culture, so there's just like all players are, are there. Mm -hmm. um, if they can, like if there's an, enough of them in there that can metabolize the, um, the formaldehyde, if, if it'll work with just this mixed culture. If it doesn't work with just this mixed culture, which is totally free, you can just go to your wastewater treatment plant and ask for some. Mm. And they're usually like, yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah have that? some. <laughs> 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 um, if it doesn't work, then we can start to select for bacteria that will be able to metabolize it, basically by feeding it formaldehyde. And so when you just create formalin, which is just, um, uh, formaldehyde in water, it's about 30% formaldehyde at that point, um, you, and, you, and you drip that in, the bugs that, the bacteria that can metabolize it are being fed while the others are being starved. And so eventually you're going to change your population such that you develop a population that can um, uh, metabolize the formaldehyde because those are the only ones that are surviving. Um, and so then hopefully create a more and more effective um, tool. Gretchen, how, how do you transport it like, 